Hi, I'm George Pearson, and this is a tutorial video for Adobe's Photoshop program. You'll find links in the description for any materials used in this video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, like, and also share the video. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the video. In this Photoshop tutorial, we'll be creating this wedding announcement right here. It's pretty straightforward, but there are a few little tricky things about this. First off, notice we have these bows in here and these ribbons. These are made with a special paintbrush set that I found over on DeviantArt and I have the link for that in my materials page. So find that over there and the link for that of course is in the description. So we'll be using that brush. And this is pretty straightforward. There are two copies in here but there are a few things you need to do to make this work out properly. That's just a copy of this. A little background texture and a little section here with some texture on that. Pretty straightforward stuff. And then of course some text and a picture and a little bit of fancy tricky work here on this frame. Nothing really unusual, nothing really that isn't easy to do once you know these steps involved. The most difficult part really is going to be making these bows. Let's look at our layers over here. Quite a few layers as you can see. And we'll be going through and using a lot of these layers. One thing about the bow, let me just see if I can hide those and bring this up and that and I'll hide that text as well as just get that out of the way there we go the problem with this brush here is that it has a transparency to it so in order to work with this and create our bows we'll be needing to actually build the bow on top of a white surface and then clip that out again nothing unusual about doing that Okay, let's go ahead and start. I'm going to leave all of this stuff in the background. And let's make a new layer right here above all that stuff. And I'll fill this layer with white. And I'll just build this right on top of our existing file in there. So you can always go back and refer to that for demonstration purposes. So the first thing you need to do is you want to create that kind of diagonal shape in there. And we'll be doing that on a new layer, so make a new layer above our white background layer. And I need to have some guidelines in here. Now this file, if you look at the rulers over here, is five inches tall by seven inches wide. It's the, the default five by seven that comes with Photoshop. You probably want to make a different size depending upon where you're getting your announcements printed, what size the final has to be at. But we'll stick with the default Photoshop size for right now. The resolution is 300 dots per inch. Let's just take a fast look at that. And let me just bring up image size right here. There you go, 5 by 7 and 300 pixels or dots per inch. Now I want to have a horizontal line right in the middle and then two vertical guidelines. We'll use those to build our basic layout for that center section. So let's first go up here to View and New Guide. Let's do our horizontal one first. Since the file is 5 inches tall, this can be at 2.5. And choose OK, and that will put that right in the middle of the page. There we go. I now want to have one at 3 and at 4 on the vertical. So View and New Guide. Let's go to Vertical. Set this one at 3. And then View new guide we're still in vertical and set this to four we can now use those points to lay out our diagonal stripe go over here to the lasso tools i'm using the polygonal lasso tool and i'll click right here where that guideline crosses the side and let's pull that down to the middle point here and click come outside there we go. And then back up to this point right there. Actually, there, that point right there is what I want. Click at that point and pull that up to our middle point over here. Again, go outside and then come back and finish off at the start. So that gives us a selection and that leaves us two matching triangles. We can now fill this selection. I'm just going to fill this with black. So invert our colors and fill. Make sure you're on your new layer. There we go. And fill that with black. That just gives us our basic positioning 
for this file. There we go. We can now deselect that. So there is the basic layout. We also can hide the guides at this point. We no longer need those guides. So just go ahead. I'm just going to clear those out that we're done with the guides. Now I want to fill this and also fill that background. But I'm going to put a new layer here above the background. There we go. I always like keeping a clean background layer when I'm working. So let's fill this with a pattern. And the one that I use, go up here to Patterns. And let's see if we can bring that down so you can see that. Click on Pattern up here in our Options. And go over here to our little icon. And I want to have Artist Surfaces. Let's bring that up. And I'll just append those, put them on down below. Here's the Artist Surfaces. The one I want is that one right there. And that's called Gauze. Click on that. And that'll be our fill. Again, we're on our new layer here underneath our black stripe. I'll just fill that with that gauze effect. Give that a second to come in. There we go. There's that gauze effect. That's kind of a nice little background effect. You can really choose any background texture you want for this. You even use something else fancier. It's up to you. That's just one that I'm using for this particular demonstration. Let's now put the texture in here for this shape. So I'm going to just make a copy of this. I like making copies as I go. You'll see I, I do this a lot. The way I can always go back if I need to go back a step, it's easy to do since I haven't destroyed that one. Let's now fill this and back up to our paint bucket, back up to our fills, go to our patterns. Let's add in one more pattern set. And I want colored paper right there, color paper. Click on that one and we'll append that so it comes in after the other textures. There we go. And I'll scroll down a little bit. And there's a green one right here. As you can see it says green on black. Just after that we have green with fibers. That's the one that you want. Green with fibers. Click on that one. And fill this black shape with that. Now I know that in my example it was blue. Right now it's, it's green. We'll make that adjustment as soon as it has filled in here with the paint bucket. There we go. Let's now change that. Go up here to Image, come down to Adjustments and Hue Saturation. We'll adjust the color and the brightness on this one. Now for the hue, I'm setting this to 44. That gives us our bluish tone. And I want it a bit darker than this, so let's set the lightness here at minus 43. And there we go. There's that nice background coloration. Okay, that takes care of the basic stripe area. The next thing we need to do is we want to create our bows. This is where it gets a little bit tricky and we'll walk us through this step by step. Let's make a new layer first and I need to choose a color here for our ribbons. What I'm using is kind of a magenta and it's it's in this area here. Anything you know in around this area is going to be just fine. But if you want to be exact, the color that I used down here is B13FD2. So that's the exact color that I used. But anything around here is fine. Just you know, in the magentas, anything in here. You can actually use any color that you want. And I recommend using a color that works well with the photograph that you have. Keep them just a little bit muted, though. You don't want to have this too bright. So choose OK. That gives us our foreground color. This is now our brush color. Let's now go up to our brushes and bring this brush set up. Here it goes. I pinned it at the bottom of my brush list and these are all of these different bows and ribbons. These are different bows in here and then different ribbons. There's a lot of these. It's a real nice brush set and again the link for this you'll find on my support page for this video. I want that one right there. It's called the Crooked Bow. The number here, these are just the sizes of the brush. So it's a Crooked Bow at 308 pixels. So click on that one. Now we need it much larger than this. So I'm going to reset the size up here. And I am setting this to 750. There we go. And there's that, that bow. Now as I demonstrated before, the bows have a bit of transparency in them. So what I need to do is I need to fill this layer with white first. 
I'm going to do that invert our colors, go to our paint bucket, make sure that you're set for foreground color up here on the brush. We're still set, of course, for that pattern. So foreground color, and that's white. Fill our layer. There we go. So there's our white layer. So that's all ready to go. We can now invert our colors again. Let's go back to our brush. We should still be sitting on that brush. There it is. Just put it in the middle someplace. Just one click, and that's all you need. So there's that basic brush. Now I want to clip this out of this white background. So I'll grab the magic wand, I'll click on the background area, and I want to make sure that this doesn't give me a little bit of a white border on this thing. If I zoom in, you'll see that we're getting a little bit of white around the edge of our selection. So I need to adjust the selection. Now keep in mind that the white is selected. So if I expand the white area, it's going to come into the ribbon. So let's go ahead and do that. So select, and then do modify, and expand. Just set it at, at a couple of pixels is all we need. And notice how that thing comes inside of that ribbon and cleans up that edge for us. All right, let's just zoom back out again. Again, the white is selected. Hit the delete key, and that takes care of that. And then we can deselect that. We now have our nice ribbon sitting here on its own layer. Now I want to rotate this around, and let's just zoom out a little bit again. There we are, to get the right positioning on this thing. So I'm going to rotate this image, edit, transform, and rotate. There we go. And swing this around about negative 60 degrees. You can just you know do it this way if you want to, just kind of swing it around like that. Or come up here and just type in negative 60 up there. And we'll apply that transformation. Let's now make a copy of this. Pull this down onto the new layer button right there. Make a copy of that. There's our copy. Let's rotate this one. Same thing. Edit, transform, rotate. This time I want to rotate this a lot further. And here's our angle again. Let's make this one at negative 125. There we go. And we'll just hit the check mark there, put that in place. So I have these two bows now that are rotated. We can now overlap those two bows, and that gives me my fancy bow look, and the direction is all lined up the way I want it to. Now let's merge these layers. If you want to, you can put a drop shot in at this point to kind of separate those, but I'm not going to bother with that. I think it's fine as is. So let's choose our two layers here. Hold the control key down, click on each one so that they're both selected. Right click and merge layers. There's now one layer. Notice how kind of washed out it is though. So I want to make this a lot darker. So let's take this layer, copy the layer. Here we go. On the top layer, change the blending mode to multiply. There we are. That's now beginning to look pretty good. Let's now merge these layers again. Again, hold the control key down, click on both layers, right click, merge layers, and there's the basic bow. Now if you want to, you can tweak the values in here a little bit. We can do that by using the levels. So let's go up here to our image adjustments and levels. There's our levels. So you can kind of darken the whole thing now by pulling the, the black in a little bit. You can adjust the midpoint a touch in here. You can bring the the lights up a little bit. By pulling these in, you're going to add in some a bit more of a contrasty look on that. So just get that so it looks it looks nice, looks nice to your eye. If you pull the outputs in, that's going to lower your contrast a little bit. Depends on how, how bright you want to have that. So I just pulled the left in a bit. In this case, I, I did 21 and 237 on the right hand side. I left the midpoint right out at 1.0. And she was okay. So there's our first bow. We want to have a second bow down here. So copy this layer, drag it down to our new layer button and copy it, and drag that bow down there. So there's our, our two layers. Now let's put a, a drop shadow on the bow. 
and we use our layer fix either the button right at the bottom down here or up to layer layer style drop shadow and I set on global light I'm going to increase my distance a little bit here let's put the distance at 10 instead of 5 and put the size at 10 instead of 5 as well there's a little bit of drop shadow that's going to show more once we get our picture in place in here now the bottom one down here we can actually copy this layer style just right click copy layer style let's go to our bottom one right click and paste layer style and there it is it just copies that layer style over for us real nice trick okay next we need to put our ribbons in here in behind the bow and the ribbons are going to follow that line for us so I'm going to go back over make sure we are on our color still that's good let's make a new layer just like we did before and back to our paintbrush and let's find one of our ribbons in here this kind of satiny ribbon right there it says 400 that's a nice ribbon we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll use that ribbon let's bring the size up a bit to 550 which I think is about right and let's see I'll just kind of compare it there that looks good looks like it's the same size as that ribbon now we need to have this filled with white just like we did with the bows so let's invert our colors grab our bucket make sure that the foreground is selected up here on your options and white fill it with white invert our colors go back to our paintbrush and we're still on that brush and just click in there someplace there we go there's that ribbon same thing as before we want to select the white area back up to select modify and expand that selection by two pixels that just cuts it into the ribbon a bit better hit the delete key and then deselect so there's our nice clean ribbon we now can spin this around so we get it aligned properly I'm going to hide that top bow and let's zoom in just a bit here and edit transform rotate I'm just going to manually do this just kind of eyeball it and that looks like we're right there that's 39 say 40 degrees approximately I'll just type it into exact and it's a negative 40 degrees actually there we go and apply that so there's our ribbon now you can put your ribbon right on the line if you want to let's just take it off screen here just a bit I need to have a couple more so let's make copies of this I'll copy one more here and pull that up I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard here and just tap that into place there we are let's make another copy of this one and drag that up just a little bit again use the arrow keys on my keyboard to nudge that into position so there's the ribbon that looks nice we now can select all three of these layers hold the top one down hold the shift key down click the bottom layer of those three right click and again we're going to merge those together right click over here on the name merge those layers let's make a copy of that and let's hide that bottom ribbon pull that copy down and let's just get it so it's centered over that line that looks good and again I'm going to be using my cursor keys here to nudge this up into place I'm tapping over three and then up three and over three and up three until it gets into position there we go so there's our ribbons now these need to be below the bows let's bring our bows back in again so just grab the bow and pull it above the ribbon do that for both ribbons here both bows above both ribbons I want to copy that layer style again so right click on the name copy layer style come to the ribbon right click paste layer style and the next one right click and paste layer style and there we go we have our bows in place not too difficult okay now we need to come in and put in our picture in here and let's just bring in some guidelines I want it about an inch in from the side about like that 
only have about a half inch space down at the bottom down here. Bring it about one and a half, or three and a half inches on the right hand side, and then it's going to be oh in here someplace. It's been kind of like that. Now the positioning is going to depend more on your image than it is on my guidelines. So I don't pay that close of attention to what I'm doing here with these guidelines. This is just kind of a general guess. The actual size will depend upon what picture you choose to use. Now I have my picture ready to go up here in my recent file list. And it's right there. It's just called Soft Focus. Let me just float that. Drag that into my other picture. There we go. And get rid of that. Now you can see why I put the guidelines in. It kind of allows me to visualize how the picture is going to look. It's a bit large, I think, at this point. So let's just transform scale. And I'll pull it down a little bit in size, just kind of using that frame layout to visualize where it's going to be. And that's actually not too bad right about in here somewhere. I think that's pretty good. Again, the actual positioning will depend upon your image that you're using, your picture that you're using. Now, I don't want to have all this excess stuff out here, but just in case, I don't want to cut that off either. So, let's do a couple of things. First, I'm going to pull my layer down underneath that one ribbon. There we go, so the whole thing is underneath the ribbon. Let's now put a layer mask in here. So let's click on this layer, click on the layer mask button. So we're on our layer mask right now. Now I want to select this area here. So grab the elliptical marquee, or actually the rectangular marquee, and drag corner to corner on our guidelines. That selects the inside. What I want though is the outside selected. So select and inverse. The outside is now selected. When you're working with a layer mask, white shows. You can see it's white, everything's showing. The opposite is true, black hides. So, paint bucket, click on the outside area. That makes the outside area black. It hides all that. And there we go. So let's go ahead and deselect that. So there is the picture. We now can put in a second set of guidelines in here to use to create our frame. So let's pull these guys down just a little bit. I'm just going to leave the other guidelines on there so that I can visualize how thick I want that frame. Again, this is going to be a personal preference. Some pictures will look better with thicker frames. Some will look better with thinner frames. It's really up to you. So I'm not going to be giving you any specific dimensions on this one. Just you know, do what looks good. Now, if, if it's doing the same, it's kind of snapping there and I can't get it where I want it. Just go up to View and uncheck Snap. And then you can drag it in and position it exactly where you want it. And I want it right about there. And I think this top one's a little too close. Pull it up just, just a hair. Let me pull it up and then bring it back in again. Now to get these really nice and neat, what you want to do is you want to try to create a square in the corner. And I didn't want to do that. Undo that move. There we are. So you want to create a square in that corner. Once the corner is square, then those are going to be the same size. And that looks pretty nice. So guidelines. Let's make a new layer underneath the picture layer. Just like that. Let's grab our marquee again, the rectangular marquee, and grab from the outside lines up there and drag to the outside down here. Now I turned snap off so it's not snapping to my guidelines. So let's just undo that and let's put snap back on again. That'll make this a lot easier. Again the outside intersection there and drag to the outside intersection down here. That gives us that selection is just a little bit larger than the picture. We now can fill that with our same ribbon color. So paint bucket and fill. All right, and at this point, we can turn that selection off, deselect, and we can get rid of those guidelines. They're no longer needed. So we'll just clear those guides. Okay, there's the frame. Let's now make the frame look a little bit fancier. This is kind of boring. You can do whatever you want on this. We're just gonna be using some layer styles to make the frame here a little more interesting on this. We'll do a little bit of, of work on that to make it a little bit better. So layer and layer style. We'll do a bevel and emboss first. What you want to start with is a, an inner bevel. So it goes inside the 
that shape and you want it smooth and then we want to set up our depth. Now I used 134 on mine. Again, it's a visual thing, so just kind of visualize that. You can, see, you can kind of see how that changes in there. So I have my set at 134 on the depth. And then the size, let's set this at 21, makes it much larger, as you can see right there. And soften that down just a little bit, soften it to 15, kind of softens the curve. It's already beginning to look pretty nice. It has a nice little frame effect to it, but it's not as much as I want yet. So down here where it says shading, come down to gloss contours. And there's one that I want to use here, and it's that one right there. It's kind of the, the two peaks. Wait for the little thing to pop up there. There we go. So it says ring, double. Click on that one, and there we go. A nice frame effect on that. Now, if you want, you can take this one step further and put a little bit of texture into that as well. Come down here where it says texture. Click on texture, and you'll see you have all kinds of textures to play with. Now, the one that I like, that I used in my previous one, let's go over here, click on textures, click on that little icon right there, and come down to the erodible textures. I'm just going to replace what's in there with that. Click OK. So here's our erodible textures. And we have one right there that says cold press. Real nice. It's kind of an interesting little texture to that. Now it's too strong and we've lost all of the effect, of course, in there that we did with our contouring. So I want to bring the contouring back in again. So let's bring the, do a few adjustments in here. Let's set our scale to 37%. So it's a lot smaller, little, little finer dots. Let's change the depth to a negative 22. And once I bring that depth down, notice how we're getting the shading back in again and the shaping back in again from that pattern. And choose OK. So there we are. There is the frame for our picture. All we're left with now is just to place in the text to finish this off. Now, once it's done, you can you know modify a lot more of this. Let's say you wanted to make these a lot darker or sharper, you can do that by simply doubling up on those. Let me just grab this, copy that layer, make a new copy, come back up here to multiply, and you can use your blending modes in here to change that effect. I'm going to use the, the wheel on my mouse, and notice as I, I roll through here, I can actually change the effect of that, all kinds of different effects, just by using a different blending mode and then you know copying that one layer on top of the other layer. So if you want to make some adjustments in here on that look, you can. That's that's easy to do. Okay, I'm just going to delete that one. I left mine a little bit flat looking on purpose. It has kind of a an artistic effect and not a real totally photographic effect. Okay, now for our text, let's put a new layer above everything up here, put in a new layer right there. Now the text I'm using is one called Edwardian Script ITC and you can find that online easily as well. Just do a, a search for Edwardian Script ITC and you find it online. I found it on a site called My Font Free and again I have a link for that on the materials page, on the material support page. So let's go to our type tool here. Make sure you change the color of your type. Just put Pull it to upper left hand corner there so the type is white. And let's set the type size to 60. And we'll find that typeface. And you ought to scroll up a little bit. There we go. Scroll back down a touch and go a little bit slower in here. And we'll find that. There it is. Edwardian script. It's just a nice, simple script face. What I like about this one is that the caps are real large and fancy. So I'll click on that, and we'll just put our text right in here someplace, and the first name is Bill. I'll do a space. I want to have and, but I want to have the and smaller, so let's change this to 30 points. And back down here, and type in and, and a space. Put this back up to 60 points again, and back down. And type in Kathy. There we are. Okay, I'll just pull this into position, which is right in here someplace. 
There we go. Now, I want to put the last name on a separate line. I did that on purpose. So let's make a new layer here. Back to our type tool. Click down here someplace so you're not up against that text. You don't accidentally click on that text. And let's just type in their last name here. There we are, Morris. Now the reason why I did that on a separate layer is that I can overlap this text. I'm just going to pull it up here using my arrow keys, cursor keys, and I'll pull it up until the swoops in here overlap each other. It gives a real nice look to it. Again, one of the nice things about this typeface is that the caps are so much larger than the lowercase that if you overlap the caps, there's still a lot of space between the words. So it makes it real nice for this kind of a basic layout. All right, so that takes care of the name. Let's put another line right down here below this. This will be the date down here. So let's go back to our type tool. And in this case, I'm going to change the size a bit smaller. Let's put this down to a 24 point. Come down below. And yeah, change my size again. Let's just try that again. There we go, 24 point. Let's see if it stays put this time. And it does. And I'll just type in a date here. And put a date right there below the picture. Looks pretty nice. Last thing we want to have is to put in our line. I can see what happened over there that actually changed the size of that type. No problem. Double click. We'll put that back up to 60 again. Problem solved. And one more line of type in here. So I'll do a new layer. Now this time I'm going to be changing the typeface a little bit. I'm just going to be using a standard typeface for this. So back to our type tool. Let's come down to a standard Times New Roman. I'll just scroll way down on the list until we're down to our Times New Roman, which is way down towards the bottom of this whole big long mess in here. Times New Roman. There we go. Let's set this at italic. So Times New Roman, italic. I want it a lot smaller this time, so 13 point. And this is going to be for our quote. So the quote will be going right down here. And we'll reposition that. Now I already have this thing typed up. Let me just bring that up. Here we go. Here's the quote that I'm using. I'll just select this whole thing like that. Right click and copy and then triple click to select that and hold the control key and V key down. That just pastes in that quote. Just select the whole thing. I'll set that for center text. There we go. There's our quote. We can now just position that where it looks nice. And if you're overlapping a little bit on your bow down there, you can put a drop shadow onto the text. You don't have to overlap. It's up to you. You can reposition things so that doesn't happen. Let's just go over here, layer, layer style, drop shadow. I'll leave it at the default to see how that looks. Looks nice. Just a little bit of a drop shadow in there helps to separate out that type. Now, again, if you want to be a little bit more specific on this, you can pull this line up a little bit, you know, change that spacing in there. And you can do that by using the paragraph tools. Here's our paragraph. And you can adjust the spacing above the paragraph right here. If you go actually you know roll over that little icon you can pull that to the left and notice how it pulls the paragraph up. It changes the spacing on the paragraph. So I can pull it up so that I have just a bit of a line in there but not too much. That gets it a little bit further away from that bow and now by repositioning our bow just a bit here's the bow. I can move the bow down a touch like that, just kind of a little shift on the bow and get it off of the text. And of course I'll need to move the ribbon a little bit as well. So you can reposition these things if you want to to make everything fit in exactly where you want it. There you are. That's how you do what I call here the ribbon wedding invitation. Again, pretty straightforward. The only really tricky part about the whole thing is doing this bow effect using that special ribbons and bows paintbrush. And again, the link for that is in my materials.
Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.